boom, right there. I've got that it's it's straight up 1030. And so as others chime in, uh, I don't I don't want to waste any time. I uh, I want to get <laughs> right to the meat. And uh, <laughs> Stacy, so you know the slogan is uh, "I bring the meat every week." I and so, yes, and so I appreciate you jumping on and uh, sharing with us today. But uh, guys, I can tell you that um, uh, we're we're in for a treat uh, because I admire this woman. Uh, and when you look at her credentials, for someone who's only really been in this a very short period of time, I mean, uh, I think Kenneth is probably the only person on currently who's been in it less than um, than Stacy, and yet she's just uh, she's succeeding at a very very high level. And so, um, love to know, Stacy D, what uh, what's the secret sauce? <laughs> As you uh, tell us just a bit about yourself. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Stacy Davidson, and um, Ben and I have, um, we are both ballers, so his nickname is Hotshot, by the way, so Hotshot Ben Baker, so quote, <laughs> Hotshot. Um, <laughs> I've been in uh, real estate really barely six years. Um, I grew up in Oklahoma, but I've been with Keller Williams three years. I'll, I'll go back to my history in just a minute. I've been with Keller, three, <clears throat> Keller Williams three years. And out of those almost six years, and uh, I'm just so glad I joined Keller Williams. I've just I've grown so much. I grew my first brokerage, but to a point where I was kind of at a point where I needed to grow more. So it was the best decision <clears throat> I've ever made. And um, I, I sell. I wear many hats. I sell uh, residential, luxury, farm and ranch, transitional land, lots, lake lots, development land. I just. I just kind of dabble in everything. And what I'd like to mostly touch on today is to be a resource for people that are in land, whether it's luxury, I mean, um, resident, can't even talk, whether it's any kind of land, uh, transitional land or farm and ranch or anything. But a little bit about myself, why I'm a little bit passionate about land is I grew up in Oklahoma on a ranch where I did have horses and competed I was a, a barrel racer. I don't know if anyone knows what that is, but um, later, in, <laughs> later in college, I competed professionally. Um, my grandmother was a broker in Atoka, Oklahoma. That's where I grew up, a small town. And she was a broker there and she would, uh, she sold everything too. And she would put on her red lipstick and go appraise a farm or, um, you know, sell a farm or a, a house or anything. But she did not encourage me to be a realtor because um, in Oklahoma and back then it wasn't just a good resource of steady income, as she said. So I, um, I played basketball in college one year. So I graduated from high school, played basketball in college one year. And then that was kind of enough for me. I was on the college rodeo team and competed that way. So with kind of a knowledge of uh, my grandfather was a rancher and we used to work cows. So I just had that kind of passion and knowledge a little bit about land, but I don't know everything, but I'm here to help if, if I can. Um, let's see, I played basketball. Let's see. Oh, after graduation, I um, graduated with a business administration degree and I moved to the middle of nowhere uh, land of no opportunity. So I went back to school and got my teaching certificate. And I was hired in Frisco in 1996, a very long time ago. Frisco was very small. So I was a teacher for Frisco ISD for 26 years. And I was also, when I got my license, I was the last five years of my teaching career, I was also a realtor. So I was dual career. And that was a lot on my plate, but uh, I managed and did it. So I've officially had my first year of completing my first year of not being a teacher and only a realtor. So that's been really exciting. But like Ben and I were talking, um, you know, being a teacher for so long and transitioning full time into real estate, there's a lot of uh, similar things that help me with my clients. And I think that's part of where the success is and some of those things are as a teacher you are a coach you are an encourager 
uh, definitely a problem solver. Uh, that I, I probably was more of a problem solver than a teacher and um, you know, dealing with all different kinds of personalities and being able to adjust to different personalities. And then it even goes to the outside, to the parents and adjusting to their personalities and you know calming people down and such. And uh, as an elementary school teacher, you're definitely a nurturer. So all of those traits go into my clients. And I don't even think I mean to do that. It's just what I've known for so long. And, you know, real estate is not always um, a celebration, you know, when you're doing closings um, as on social media it, it is portrayed as celebrating and uh, happy and we closed and we got a new home. But a lot of people are going through death and being forced to sell uh, divorces and being forced to sell. So there are a lot of different um emotional things that I think as a teacher help me help them. And uh, even going through things personally, being able to, you know, help them and guide them. So really my motto is, and I tell them, I will hold your hand the whole way. And I literally do. Uh, and they, I'm, I've saved a marriage. I've been a psychologist, uh, but the saving the marriage was my most proud moment. <laughs> Talked them off the cliff. But um, what I'd like to bring today is uh, some different things that you need to know when you are selling land versus residential. There's a lot of different things that you need to know. And I don't know if anyone um, is interested in land sales, but you're going to have that come up at some point because that's such a booming thing right now. And I want to provide myself as a resource if you need to reach out and ask certain questions or um, you know, help me, let me help you guide you through some things because uh, purchasing land is a lot different. You, you've got to know the whys to everything because you can't just go, if you're representing a client that wants land, there are things that you need to know such as um, utilities and, and what their purpose for the land is. So um, I've created a, a sheet for questions for buyers and sellers on land and one thing is, if you have clients, you want to know uh, if they're interested in buying something. Uh, is is there a residence on the on the property? If there is, uh, you need to know what kind of contract to use. Uh, if it's if it's residential, you use a farm and ranch contract. If there's uh, no structures on the property, then you use uh, an approved property contract. Um, another thing is. The, one of the most important things is you have to know if there are utilities on the property. So say, Ben, you want to um, purchase uh, 100 acres out in... Um, Sherman, Mid Sherman, come on. Sure, rural, rural Sherman, out of the city yes. limits. Okay, yes. and you want to you want to purchase this 10 acres and you want to subdivide it into one acre lots. So... Uh, I could just sell Ben that land and close and then Ben's like, okay, I'm going to do this. And he finds out that he's, he can't do that. Uh, we didn't ask where the utilities were. You have to know where the utilities are. Does it have electricity and how far away from the property the electricity is? Because it can be very expensive to bring in electricity depending on uh, how far it is away. Um, you want to know if there's water available. Uh, if, if there is not water available, uh, you will have to put a well on the property if you want to build a, uh, you know, if you want water. Um, building a well, you have to have someone come out and to evaluate to see if you can, how, how deep do you have to go to get the water source. Um, if you, if there is water out near the property, so I'm just using this 10 acres for an example, Ben, how many water meters can you have on that 10 acres? These are all things that you must find out before closing if that's your purpose. Um, and if you and all those are calls to the city and the water department, and they will let you know if you can have a meter on the property, number one, and how many meters their water system will uh, support on that property. So you may only be able to put one water meter on that 10 acre track, and then you're, you're, you know, you can't do the other sources. The rest of them would have to have wells. That makes sense. Um, most acreages, sewer will not be out. 
sewer, city sewer will not be out. So um, majority will have a septic. You have to have a septic system for your sewer. Um, and I want to say those costs, of, I'm sure inflation has gone up, but just start at $10,000 for a well, you know, if you're building a home to add that expense. Um, on uh, all utilities, you want to find out how far away they are from the property. Um, surveys. Surveys. I am licensed in both Texas and Oklahoma. I forgot to mention that. So I do land here in Texas, and I have also been able to help all the people that I grew up with, farmers and ranchers in Oklahoma and Broken Bow, that area. Um, so it, it, in Texas, it's very important. We have to have surveys unless it's cash, but you do want to survey on a property so you'll know your boundary lines. Um, if there's not a survey and it's a large piece of, of property, it's not a, like a survey on a house, uh, you have to get estimates because, let's see, I have, this is a large piece of track of land, but it's 400 acres. And I want to say, I think it's going to be around $40,000 for a survey on that property. So, you know, when you're submitting an offer it's on such a large piece like that, um, sometimes they can split the survey cost or, you know, buyer or seller, just depending. And on land sales, it's not like uh, multiple offers on a house. Usually you, you um, just have a specific person that has a specific need for land. So, um, you know, you can't say no buyer to pay survey or seller to pay survey. It, it's pretty much, you have to really dig in. And a lot of times they will split the cost of that. Um, in Oklahoma, a survey is not as important. Uh, they do abstracts, which is a whole different animal. Uh, Oklahoma is uh, Indian territory. And so they have abstracts versus surveys. So um, you have to make sure they have an abstract on the land. And if they don't, an abstract is like a blueprint of who's owned the property throughout the years, you know, even like, you know, the land rush when they, who put the flag in the ground first, right? Um, so you have to know, A, do they have an abstract? If not, then they have to build one and they have abstract offices in Oklahoma. And that does take a little time because they have to build the blueprint. And Oklahoma is very much a slower paced state than Texas. So things are slower. Um, and closings take a little longer. Uh, on your land, if you want land, you have to figure out what the restrictions are. So Ben, can you put a mobile home on your 10 acre track? Uh, if that's your intention, we need to find out what the restrictions are. If you're uh, buying a, a, one, a horse ranch or a large track, you have to make sure you can have, uh, there's no restrictions against your horses and your uh, exotic animals or whatever you want to bring in. So you have to check the restrictions. Um, and what can they, oh yeah, um, some properties I have, um, 24 lake lots listed in Lake Texoma, and there are CCNRs on that, and you cannot bring in mobile homes, and you have to build a 2,900 square foot home and larger. So if you can get access to the CCNRs or the restrict deed restrictions, and how do you do that on some of the rural properties? You can call the title company. They'll usually have it. You might have to actually go to the courthouse if it's a small rural town. Um, and uh, calling the city on almost everything on all your questions is key too. So finding out all these the answers to the questions on what your primary use for the land is, is very important. Um, uh, on min, uh, mineral rights are, I don't know if anyone knows what mineral rights are, but that's one of the questions you have to ask. Like if I have a buyer that wants to purchase land, do, do the mineral rights come with it? And the mineral rights are the underlying below the soil that uh, someone else may own. It's always great. My grandparents said never sell your mineral rights. So most people will not sell their mineral rights. And some people uh, don't even realize that they're selling them. So they automatically pretty much convey. And there's a form where you say you want to keep your mineral, mineral rights. Um, and Stacey, mineral does, rights that's interrupting. does that make it... Uh, rather difficult to, to sell if um, 
uh, if I'm, again, if I'm wanting the land, but you, you want to retain the mineral rights, then what, does that make the sale a little more difficult or not really? Uh, at times it can, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, and they may give up their mineral rights, but majority of the time, someone else owns those mineral rights from a long time ago. And you have to hire a landman to, uh, to find out who actually owns, owns the mineral rights and, um, you know, purchase those if you can. Now, a lot of uh, people that their land have, their land has been in the family for generations, they generally do own the mineral rights and won't give them up. And um, my grandparents owned their mineral rights and they would allow people to come drill and they would um, get paid. Like I remember my grandfather getting a check for $13,000 a month, this was years ago. So imagine what it is now um, while they were drilling and while they were hitting whatever they were hitting. And so that's why people hang on to those mineral rights. So he had the mineral rights, even though if he sold uh, his land or not, he still owned those mineral rights. So yes, it can get in the way, but if, if the seller doesn't own them, there's really nothing you can do about it anyway. But it's very interesting to know, uh, that's something you need to know about property. Um, let's see. Oh, you, I have, what time is it? Is it time to go? There are, I'll tell you this real quick. I have apps that it's almost a necessity. Or it is for land sales, but as a residential realtor, it's great too. And one of those apps is called OnX, O-N-X. And you can, um, you get on there and you can see where the boundary lines are of any property. So even if I'm at a house, I'll show my clients the boundary lines. You can put waypoints on there. So this last weekend I was showing a 400-acre uh, track and we were on side-by-sides. And so you can do a tracker because uh, it was partially mountain. So you can do a tracker and um, so you can find the yellow brick road back if you get lost. Um, and you can see where floodplains are. If it's in a flood zone, you can see the creeks, you can see the soil. All those things are important. I have such a long list of things uh, I could talk about, but I see I'm out of time and I was worried You're about fine. not being able to talk 15 minutes. Exactly, right? Yeah. So I, I think what, what you've highlighted is this, is that that's such a specialty niche that I would suggest that you, you stay in your lane, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Because you already know that if I had uh, an opportunity, you're you're my partner, and you didn't even know it, right? Because yeah. <laughs> I'm giving it, I'm giving it to you. Um, and and Christina has put your information there uh, in the chat. So again, if you have if you have questions, um, you know, here in Texas or Oklahoma, I mean, Stacy D is the one to reach out to, and and that's the reason why I was excited about having you on because. Um, one, I know so very little about it, and and we're seeing uh, your investment up in the Sherman area, my investment, uh, uh, at some points we'll probably be neighbors up there, yeah. right, uh, that, you know, the, uh, there's, there's going to be opportunity, I think, for all of us, that somebody's going to pose a question uh, for us, or they're going to talk about land. I've got lunch on Friday with um, two brothers that I'll probably bring you in, Stacy, because I know they're going to have questions for me that I can't answer. So anyway, I, I appreciate you um, highlighting and uh, illustrating some of the uniqueness of, of, of land, especially. Um, and I know that's difficult for you because guys, this this young lady here, uh, it's difficult for her to shine the light on herself um, you know, bragging and boasting is not, uh, it's not comfortable, I think for most of us, but sometimes it almost feels like it's a necessary evil in our business that, uh, sometimes we've got to, we've got to bring a little attention. So folks know this is, I mean, this is what I do and how I can serve. So I appreciate you stepping into that as uncomfortable as it is for you. So Thank you. Uh, finally, I would, I would ask this. Before we go, um, uh, I mean, last year your business was um, was fantastic, and so far this year you guys are pacing well ahead. I think of the the twenty million that you did last year. 
where is that business coming from? And is it is it all your contacts there in Oklahoma because you've got so many so much land and parcels and stuff? But where is that business coming from? It's coming from my spirit influence. So I grew up in one town in Oklahoma, and when if anyone has grown up in one town, everyone knows everyone, and the trust in the my family had four dealership. My father was the physician there, so there's there's a trust and a reputation that you know, my family has built. So I have those resources. And then I have 26 years of teaching of families that have trusted me to raise their children, you know, kindergarten through fifth grade. Uh, they reach out. And now some of my students, I have sold some of my students' homes. I guess I'm that old uh, now. And um, my, I have two daughters. One just graduated from OU and one's about to graduate from OU, but they played uh, club volleyball all through uh, high school and they played high school volleyball. So the years of traveling with these families, that's a whole nother niche that I have, um, you know, resources. And I was team mom and, and, you know, all those relationships I had built. So yeah, I have a, lot, a big sphere of influence where um, people have trusted me and, and are reaching out. Trust and relationship. I, I think it's key. And, uh, and I, Clearly, we're preaching to the choir because everyone who joins in, uh, the folks who are on today, I think we're all about relationships and and uh, and nurturing those relationships and and uh, and just being the trusted advisor. So uh, I think we're fortunate. So um, I, I suggest I suggest everyone try to dabble in land because it's very rewarding. This year, I closed my biggest deal I've ever closed, and it was it was just dirt. There's a lot of research that you know, went into it, but uh, it was for land development. And I mean, it's, it's a great, just start getting into it. And I will help you if, if you have an interest in it. My, well, and I know here, uh, oh my goodness, buy dirt, there you go. <laughs> so the, uh, uh, the KW group, um, would you say that that's, uh, that's beneficial, or it's just a connection, uh, and, and an opportunity to, to network with other, you know, uh, you know, farm and, and, and ranch or, or land um, agents around the country? Yes, I belong to KW Land, and that's a great networking group for referrals, and uh, they have masterminds uh, once every two weeks. You can jump on. You can learn about these mapping devices like Onyx. I have MapRite, and these things are amazing. You can, that's a whole different subject, um, even on any property and being able to send interactive maps to other people with your brand on it. And uh, I mean, amazing. I would love to talk about that and I'm still learning more, but um, I just kind of started rambling and went off on that, but there's so much I can talk about and teach you. Well, I, again, you and, I, and I'll be a student. And, and again, I yeah. think we're all students of, of learning. Uh, so again, I appreciate you bringing the meat this week. Uh, again, you're the first because we've never we've never talked about land uh, before or even, you know, farms and ranches and those kind of things. So I appreciate you um, making us just that much smarter than we were when we jumped on this call 20 minutes ago. So Stacey, D, I love you. I appreciate you uh, mm -hmm. guys. I appreciate you guys jumping on um, each and every week. And um uh, let's go, let's go serve, right? Let's go serve and let's go. Uh, somebody, somebody needs to hear from us, right, Ken? They need us. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, bye, <laughs>